A new project involving researchers from the ANU and an Australian space startup company will seek to put plants on the moon. The Aleph-1 module will travel on an Israeli mission and place a terrarium on the moon's surface to test the viability of specially engineered species of plants. Dr Caitlin Burt is an advisor on the project and she joins us now from Canberra. Caitlin Burt, welcome. So how cool is it for you to be involved in something like this, sending plants to the moon? Extraordinarily exciting. It's an engineering challenge both in the context of the terrarium but also in the context of how you can actually design plants for space travel. Cool. And so how are you preparing for this? So we're looking at how biology has solved this problem previously. So once Earth was barren a long time ago and then life evolved and plants are now able to survive in extraordinary extremes of temperature uh, and all kinds of really harsh conditions on Earth. So we're going to learn how do they do that and think about how we can design plants for space travel extremes. And so what plants are you choosing? So one type of plant that we're interested in is a type of plant that's a resurrection plant. So those plants can be dried down to with a, a tiny proportion of their usual water content. And then upon rewatering, they can come back to life. So that's an extraordinary feat of evolution that they can do that. And we want to be able to borrow those sort of mechanisms to be able to survive space travel because they kind of have like a stasis mechanism in place already. And so describe for us exactly what you will be putting on this rocket. Do you have an example of it in front of you there or something, or can you just des describe what it is? Uh, yeah, happy to describe it. So, of course, space and weight is a premium um, as you're going uh, off planet and all the way to the moon. So we're going to start off with a sort of shoebox sized uh, containment. It needs to be temperature controlled and we'll have cameras in there. And one of the most exciting things is that we want to parallel this on Earth and make it ex accessible to schools and the public to be part of a parallel experiments here. So we'll have matching systems on the moon that you can watch uh, the plants grow on the moon as well as systems here so that uh, you can compare your uh, system to what's happening on the moon. And so wh when does this rocket leave? So we're aiming for uh, 2024. So we've got a bit of time to prepare and trial out what's going to work. And so will the terrarium be left there on the moon? This, this rocket is going to go up and land on the moon, is it? And to the terrarium, among, I guess, a, a heap of other stuff, is going to be left there on the moon? So we're depending on the help of the astronauts, they'll be completing a lot of different work up there. And one of that pieces of work will be to help us put our terrarium on the surface and watch that. We wanna collect data for as long as possible. And we also wanna comply with the plans in the context of avoiding uh, an excessive buildup of space junk. So um, as we move towards inhabiting other planets, we're going to make sure that we manage um, our resources uh, so that we leave things in an appropriate uh, state. And so how long are you expecting the terrarium will be sitting there on the surface of the moon? So for the size of the shoebox compartment, we can power that appropriately for a short period of time. So we want to monitor for um, 72 hours uh, and then we will reach our capacity in terms of powering. And so there'll be a probably a get very cold. Um, so we're going to go for 20, 72 hours. And what, what do you expect to learn in that 72 hours? So this will give us the opportunity to start a, a journey towards understanding how you would in the future be able to propagate plants on the moon. So this is, you know, that this first little step that we can explore how the species that we select for that journey um, perform in those conditions towards planning through the next stages of engineering crops for space. And so, yeah, so what's the point of trying to grow, grow plants on the moon? So we get to learn from engineering for one of the most challenging environments and that can feed back to innovation here on earth so if you're trying to figure out how you're going to maintain food security when you've got all kinds of crazy extreme weather events and challenges that are impacting how we can grow plants and uh, and achieve food security on earth this sort of innovative challenge gives us the opportunity to figure out 
how we can develop those sort of systems. If you imagine when we're coping with natural disasters and we need to be able to quickly recover food production, the type of systems that you would build um, that would survive space travel and be able to provide food up there are also the type of systems that you could deploy here on Earth to communities that need to be able to grow food in challenging conditions. So uh, this is like a learning experience of how you can actually achieve those engineering feats. And is there also an aim with this to see if like this is preliminary work to go towards uh, crops on Mars. Yeah, absolutely. This is the just the start. But I think the key aspect for us is that science that surrounds how you uh, engineer crops for space, how you engineer systems. So of course the the surface of the moon is covered in lunar regolith. Um, lunar regolith would need to be um, engineered and modified to be suitable for being able to uh, support plant life. So there's so many different learning experiences for us to figure out how you can go from you know, a, a barren planet to uh, being able to support plant life. And so once you wish farewell to this little terrarium shoe by size, <laughs> shoe, shoe, shoe box size terrarium and send it up to the moon, is, is that it or, or do you expect you will actually get it back? Uh, so, well, that will be a, a, a precious resource um, and we would like to make sure that we take care of all the things that we create. So we'll be coordinating with the astronauts on that mission for the future of what happens to the box afterwards. <laughs> cool. Okay, Caitlin, but really good to have a chat to you and really interested to see how this goes. Thanks, Joe. Great to talk to you. Cheers.